Good morning, everyone. Russ Barkley back again. It's time for our Saturday research review. This time we're going to focus on one that's a little bit more serious, and so I thought I would skip the dad jokes for this morning and get right into the topic. There wasn't an awful lot of research published on ADHD, but there was a sensational trade media article published over at the New York Post uh, this uh, week that deals with a quite serious topic, and that is on the prescription of stimulant medications for ADHD and the risk they pose for cardiovascular health and disease. I've covered this topic before, but I thought I'd touch upon it again, partly as a reminder, but also because there was a very large study of this published just this week over in one of the cardiology journals. So uh, let's get to it. I'm just going to walk you through this and help you to understand what's going on here. And by the way, I do want to thank Chris, one of my subscribers, for bringing this article in the New York Post to my attention. I was not aware of it, even though I'm aware of the research that this cardiologist cites, or I should say sensationalizes, in his interview with this reporter. So here's the article over at the New York Post. Uh, and if you want it, by the way, it also appeared over at Yahoo News. Uh, and basically this cardiologist from New York is saying that children who take stimulants for extended periods of time are at increased risk of having various cardiovascular problems, including arrhythmias, cardiomyopathy, uh, and so on. Now, he is correct in pointing out that these drugs do increase slightly the heart rate and blood pressure of individuals who take the medication. But that's about where the facts end and the sensationalizing begins, because he then goes on to talk about he believes that these drugs are overprescribed, that they're incredibly dangerous for your heart. As you can see here, he ranks these as among the three most dangerous drugs that you can take for your heart health. Uh, and he goes on to talk about the fact that these medications increase norepinephrine in the blood. Yes, they do, slightly. Uh, but that's how they achieve their therapeutic effects. They're increasing dopamine and to some extent norepinephrine in the brain, and that is improving ADHD symptoms. So what I want to do is skip over this particular sensationalized article and get back to the article that he cites, this research paper that appeared a year ago in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. I covered it at the time on this channel. But I'm going to go back into it again because he makes a big deal out of this article and it's not a big deal. This is where people can lie and distort and do other kinds of strange things with statistics to scare people. But when you actually look at the absolute numbers that are involved, there's no reason to be scared whatsoever. So back to this article that appeared a year ago that he's using to sort of incite fear in individuals taking these medications. This was a very large study that involved more than 12,000 pairs of patients between 20 and 40 years of age. They all had ADHD and they were grouped as to whether they took stimulant medication or not and then how long they took the medication, up to 10 years. And the paper is looking at the risk for cardiomyopathy, which is a detrimental effect on the heart muscle that might be associated with the increase in heart rate and blood pressure. So it's a very, very large study. Why is that important to point out? Well, first of all, the, it means that the results are probably robust. But secondly, it means that you start getting statistically significant findings at very, very tiny differences between the groups that you're comparing. And that's pretty much what happens in this particular paper. So the paper points out that the risk for cardiomyopathy in individuals who did not take stimulant medication for one year now, 0.31%, not 31%, three-tenths of a percent was their risk. That's without medication. What did it go to if they took medication? 0.36, an increase of just 
five one hundredths of a percent. That's the difference over one year. It is significant, as you can see in this abstract, but is that a big deal? I don't think so. Now, they go on to point out that among those who took medication for 10 years, the risk in the group that was not treated was 0.53%. That's one half of a percent. And it rose slightly to 0.72% in the 10-year stimulant-treated group. So that's an increase of about one to two-tenths of a percent of risk. Get that? Not one or two percent. One-tenth to two-tenths of one percent. That's it. So now, if you want to play around with these numbers, oh my God, look at what you can get. The increase in the odds ratio was 57% in people who took the medication over a 10-year period. Uh, and so you can look at that and say, oh, it goes up 57%, which by the way, the cardiologist in that newspaper article, that's what he emphasized. But you know, when you're playing around with very, very tiny numbers, it doesn't take much of a change to get a big percentage of increase. For instance, if the incidence of cardiomyopathy is one in people untreated, and it goes to two in people who are treated, that's a 100% increase in the risk of cardiomyopathy in the treated group. <laughs> but it just went from one to two. That's all it did in the population. So do you see what I mean? How focusing on a percent increase in a number doesn't tell us much of anything unless you know the absolute numbers that are being compared. And obviously that cardiologist doesn't want you to know that. So there is a slight increase in cardiomyopathy over 10 years in people taking stimulant medication, but the increase is trivial. Moreover, there is another interpretation in this study, something they didn't look at in this study. Why did some people stay on medication or even take medication and others with ADHD didn't? Gee, do you think that might have something to do with the severity of your disorder? And we know from multiple studies that ADHD alone is, in, is associated with an increase in various parameters of heart disease. So just the disorder alone increases risk for heart disease. So could it be possible that you're simply seeing a marker here for severity of ADHD. More severe cases take medication, more severe cases stay on their medication for longer periods of time, and more severe cases have heart disease anyway. So this study really can't sort all of that out. Even though it wants to imply that there's a causal connection here, there are other interpretations of, the date, of these data. But even if there is a causal interpretation, it's very, very small. Now compare that to the risks of not taking medication, the risks for accidents, injuries, car accidents, death, suicide, loss of your job, loss of education, loss of relationships, loss of marriages. I mean, we can go on and on and on and talk about all of the outcomes associated with ADHD, right? So you have to weigh the relative risks and benefits. And in my opinion, the risk-benefit ratio associated with taking these medications, the risk is very low relative to the benefits that come from these medications, particularly with regard to survival and welfare. So that's what this cardiologist was talking about. Now, let me go on and just talk about the paper that appeared this week, the review, and it was also picked up in the trade media over at neuroscience.com, but they did a very good, I think very reasonable interpretation of the actual study. Yes, ADHD drugs are linked to heart effects. We have known that for 60 years. Yawn, big deal, stimulants slightly increase heart rate and blood pressure. And that's what this article was about. Now, rather than dwell on the trade article, let's actually take a look at the paper. It's right here. <clears throat> this is over at the journal, The Lancet Psychiatry, and it's a meta-analysis of all studies done on the effects of ADHD medications 
on what is known as, uh, well, hemodialic, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the increase in blood pressure that's associated with these, because that's what they're really looking at here. So they're comparing all of the ADHD medications for their effects on systolic and diastolic heart rate. Okay, so that's that's great. What did they find? All right, when we go down and take a look at the results on the hemodynamic values associated with children, teens, and adults, what we find is that ADHD medications, both stimulants and the non-stimulants that are norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors like adamoxetine and veloxazine, increase blood pressure as far as the systolic and diastolic, it's an increase of one to 1.8. And in diastolic, right, it's an increase of up to about 2.4 for the stimulants. And interestingly, for the non-stimulants, it also goes up as well. But there was no difference between stimulant and non-stimulant medication. Now, let's put this in perspective, okay? So we're looking at an increase from anywhere from about one to, say, five in the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. What is the normal blood pressure? It's 120 over 80. Do you see what's going on here, All right? So an increase in your blood pressure of one to two in your um, diastolic, or systolic rather, and an increase of about one to five in your diastolic blood pressure. It's not a big deal, right? <laughs> is it? Right? I don't think so. Even in children whose blood pressure is somewhat lower than it is in adults, the change of between one and five in these numbers is trivial. Yes, it's statistically significant, but it's not all that much of an increase. For comparison's sake, let's take a look at the increase in blood pressure from walking up a flight of stairs. It's 20 to 40 in terms of your systolic and a little bit of an increase in your diastolic. But nonetheless, walking up a flight of stairs is far more dangerous to your blood pressure than is taking stimulant medication. Do you see what I mean by you've got to put these numbers in context? First of all, you need to know the actual numbers, not the percent change. And then you need to put them in the context of other things that we do routinely, like walking upstairs. And when you do that, you begin to see that in the case of stimulant medications effects, on heart functioning, yes, there's a slight increase. But relative to other things we do in our daily life, it's pretty trivial. And even the increase in cardiomyopathy, as I talked about earlier, is itself trivial, even though statistically significant. So I hope that this helps you put things into perspective with regard to the cardiovascular safety of these medications. Now, the authors of the study are correct in saying that clinicians do need to monitor blood pressure, pulse, heart rate in their patients before and after they start medication and to do so routinely when they come in for prescription renewals. But at this point, that's all they should be doing, monitoring it. Now, obviously, if somebody already has pathologically elevated blood pressure, then you're not going to put them on these medications. That would be foolish. Or if they have a history of serious heart disease, then you would not necessarily want to be using these medications. So in those instances where there is sort of pretreatment problems with cardiac functioning, then it would be prudent to perhaps stay away from these medications or use them in slightly lower doses and monitor their effects on the individual. But there's no reason to be running around like that cardiologist from New York City was doing in the New York Post article and generate fear in everybody about these medications because it isn't warranted by the evidence.
Well, I hope that helps you put things in perspective this Saturday morning about what's appearing in the trade media versus what's appearing in the science journals. Those two don't always agree with each other. And of course, the trade media likes to sensationalize these results, uh, even though it isn't warranted. So in my opinion, the short answer is these drugs are safe. They're effective. They do push up cardiovascular functioning a little bit. It's not clear that that's detrimental to individuals. Remember, increasing your heart rate is good for your heart periodically. That's why we encourage you to exercise, walk upstairs, you know, and go out for a walk and so on. By increasing your heart rate, you actually strengthen the heart rather than the opposite. So it's not clear that the effects on the heart that we're getting from stimulant medications even though trivial, are actually pathological. That's not clear. So, well, thank you all very much for joining me this Saturday morning. I hope you have a fine weekend. I'm going to go and watch the Masters Golf Tournament, my favorite all-time golf tournament of the year. It's a beautiful golf tournament. Uh, and I hope you have a fine weekend as well. So, as always, everybody, thanks for subscribing. Thank you again, Chris, for bringing that article to my attention. And live well. Be well and take care. Bye for now.